Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of talking to people you don't understand about things that you don't understand. The world would be a better place if we took the time to look at the world through the eyes of someone with a different perspective. I'm going to tell you the story of how I, an industrial designer, ended up running a science company. So, at university, I studied industrial design, which is the, the discipline of creating products that solve problems. And so, um, between our second and final year, everyone on the course goes out to industry to get a real job in a design company. And so, we get to learn to work with clients and make lots of mistakes before we can go back to our final year and do our final major project. I ended up working for a, um, a human factors design consultancy. And what that means um, is that this company looks at the way humans interact with the world and to make it better um, and easier and uh, improve the quality of everyday life. And that's something I was really interested in. And um, while I was working there, I was put on a six-month research project for a charity for blind people. And, um, I, the six-month project was about public transport. So for six months, I was ask, asking blind people about the problems they have with public transport. We were looking into how technology can help solve them. But I also had the opportunity to ask lots of other questions that I had on my mind, like um, of blind people, such as, how do you match your clothes in the morning when you get dressed? I'd always wondered that. And... Uh, something that was very important to me was, how do you know exactly how much milk to put in your tea? Um, and so, uh, these people with visual impairments, they had amazing gadgets that helped them get over these everyday things that I had never thought about. But the gadget that they didn't have was um, when I asked the question, um, how do you know when your food goes bad? Because at the moment, it's just a visual date. And the answer to that question is, we, we don't have anything. And it was affecting the kind of food that they were buying. They were buying less fresh food and more processed food, more um, long life food that they didn't have to worry about. And it was affecting their health. So I decided to go back to my final year at university and uh, look, spend my final major project looking into the way that um, we can make visually impaired, sorry, uh, expiry dates accessible to people with visual impairments. And this is how I ended up thinking about, unusually, about food waste, because I, I was naive at the start of the project, and I thought, you know, oh, poor blind people, they don't know how to, uh, how, when food goes off. And actually, in reality, we're all blind to when our food goes off, because we're all doing this. Um, if our expiry dates work, this behavior would never have to happen because we would have accurate information, which is something that we don't have. And the situation we're in is manufacturers, food manufacturers, they know that there's problems in the supply chain and things aren't always kept at the right temperature. And so they use very short dates, so they kind of remove the risk of that happening. But um, what that results is a lot of food waste. In the UK, um, where I come from, um, they, 60% of the food that we throw away is still perfectly edible. And so I realized that the solution for the design project that I was looking at was going to have to be something far greater than just looking at visual, um, the problem that visually, visually impaired people have. And so I started thinking about uh, the way we can solve this problem. I looked at Braille. I looked at... Um, technology um, and electronic solutions. But what inspired me in the end was this old banana. I'd forgotten about it, and there it was looking at me, looking all brown and spotty, and its skin was changing, and it was trying to tell me something. And um, it was telling me that it was getting older. I w wondered why our containers for our packaging couldn't behave in the same way. What if there was a box that, of food that, when it gets older, the, the, the package starts turning kind of disgusting and like bumpy and changes its texture, 
and uh, then you wouldn't even want to eat it. But before then, you'd be fine to eat it. So that's that was the initial crazy idea behind the project. And um, and so I knew as a industrial designer, I was good at working with people, figuring out a problem to a solution, maybe thinking about how I would like that solution to look like and feel like. But I didn't have the scientific background to make it work. But that didn't matter because at my university, over in the science department, um, I got introduced to a chemist who came into campus every Tuesday. And so I was talking to him about my crazy idea of a package that would um, decay at the same rate as the food. And uh, he thought for a while and he decided um, that I should try using gelatin. And I was like, gelatin? Um, and he said, yes. So it turns out in his previous career, he was working with gelatin printing for, for photographs. And his problem as a chemist and the problem, problem he was trying to solve was that this gelatin on the print kept decaying. And it was such a pain. And it was his job to just try to keep it stable. And so it was the obvious material for me to try to use because of its natural property of, of it being a foodstuff. And so... My point is, um, if you have an idea for something, but you have no idea how to make it work, that's great. And I think really interesting stuff can happen at the edge of your understanding, at the edge of understanding of someone else. So for example, this chemist had nothing, to, had no idea about how to design something, but I had no idea about the things I needed to know about, the, about science. And so in the middle of these things ended up the, the, there was something really cool that, that, that happened. And we ended up working and, um, and I, I was developing this product and uh, I was trying to use the properties of, of the gel to change and I ended up finding out that the gel changes from a solid to a liquid when it goes bad and you could actually change the strength of the gel to make it last different periods of time. So that would enable us to um, match it to lots of different products. And uh, most of the first prototypes failed, but I just thought that there's something interesting in taking gelatin, which is a waste byproduct from the meat industry, and turning it into something useful. So I kept trying, but it just, I just couldn't get it to work until one day it worked. Yay! <laughs> and so <laughs> then it was time to start taking, I mean, the project wasn't done it was time to take the product to real people and see if whether it works in real scenarios. And uh, I put it in front of um, users, not just people with visual impairments now, because I wanted it to be clear for everyone else to use. And so one of the mistakes I made at the start is, if you see in this picture, the label is in the top left-hand corner of um, the package, um, which was okay, but actually in the UK at least, people are used to seeing um, the date in the bottom right hand corner of the of the package and as you can see this lady is looking to see where she's expecting to see the product and it's not there and so we have to change that that was a problem so you never find this out until you get it to someone who might be using your your um, solution you need to do that as soon as possible so I did that a bunch of times and um, what we ended up with um, was this product which I call Mimica Touch, and it's a biologically accurate food expiry label that decays at the same rate as the food that it's labeling. And it's easy to use, all you need is your finger, and if the label feels smooth, it means the food is safe, and when you feel bumps, that's when the food goes off, and the way it works is so easy. Basically, in, you, in the middle, you have this layer of gelatin, which I was telling you about, and as I said, the gelatin turns from a solid to a liquid when it goes bad. And so at the start, when it's a solid, you can't feel the plastic bumps underneath. That's why it feels smooth. And then when the gel fails, turns to a liquid, it breaks the barrier. And then you can feel the bumps underneath. It's a really simple technology. But happily, it was one that I was able to file a patent for before I graduated from university. And um, I didn't expect to turn this idea into a company. I just actually filed a patent just to learn a bit more about patents. But um, I ended up entering it into an award called the James Dyson Award. And um, it's a really prestigious um, award given to students for the kind of a really interesting design idea. And I started doing a job. So two weeks into my new job, I got a phone call saying, you've won the you know, UK award for the best design project this year. 
And so the newspapers wrote all about it, and that's when companies started getting in touch with me. The first company to contact me was Coca-Cola. That was scary. <laughs> Um, and then all the big supermarkets in the UK wanted to do a trial with them to test the product. And I didn't know what they were talking about because, I mean, I was just, this is just a student project. I think they thought that the product was ready, and in fact it wasn't. So I had a lot of work to do, but I was just so curious to see what ha would happen if I t turned this into a company. So um, that is what convinced me to try because people were interested in, in what I was doing. And so what... Um, the product ended up being um, is a it's an interesting thing legally because we still need date codes um, by law, and we decided to just change their purpose. So the issue that we have um, with in the I, I can only speak for Europe here, but in the U European supply chain. Um, they can calculate how long the product lasts in a laboratory, but then they always just remove that time because, as I said, um, things, accidents can happen in the supply chain and foods can sometimes spoil if the temperature is too high. But as you can see at the end of these diagrams, that this is the amount of buffer that they put in. That's the amount of time between... They're currently using the worst-case scenario date, and what we're trying to get them to do is that the date on the label is the best case scenario date, the, the time that the product can actually last till. And so our label uh, enables people to test to see what's actually happened to the food. So that's why it reads estimated use by 10th of August, because that, that's all it is. It's a guess. Hopefully it can get to the 10th of August and then true expiry when you feel bumps. So you're testing something that is biologically accurate and um, it's a much better system to rely on. And so what we do at Mimica is that we deliver food waste reduction by extending the shelf life of food to the expected expiry date. And so what started off um, as, a, as a project that lo was looking at visually impaired people ended up being a solution that was useful for everybody because we all need to know when our food is spoiled. It's a food safety thing, and also we can reduce a lot of waste by having real information. And this discipline is called inclusive design, and that's um, by looking at the eyes of someone with a disability. If you can make it work for that person, it's going to be really easy for everyone else to use, and that's the idea that I kind of apply to all of the projects that I look at. And so... Um, People are really excited about this, and um, we've we've kind of now I've now have a team, and we've developed this product in the lab, and it works, like properly. <laughs> and um, this uh, big dairy company called Ala in Europe, they've reached out to us, and we've signed a agreement with them to launch this product in in the UK uh, later this year. So that's amazing news. Um, and so yeah, I, I just wanted to say that while this started as a university design project where I was just kind of exploring crazy things. I just wanted something that had never been done before and I was okay with it failing. Um, in the end, it's ended up being a company that has seven people in it, which to me sounds amazing because that's seven salaries that I have to look after every month. <laughs> and um, uh, it's amazing that I now have seven people behind me who are just as passionate about me, about what we're doing uh, to reduce food waste and improve food safety. And um, I don't know what stage of your life many of you are in, but if you're a student, please don't leave your student projects on the shelf. If you have something, uh, a curious idea that you think could improve the world, don't leave it on the shelf. Like The world needs your ideas. Um, we're only going to solve the world's problems if you actually participate. So that's the closing thought I want to leave you with. And uh, good luck in all your future endeavors.